Welcome to Lesson 8. This is the second and last part of the lecture on performing arts. The focus here are music and dance. In this lecture, music will be discussed first. After a short video that explains the benefits of playing a musical instrument, the term will be defined. And then after each of the elements are characterized, you are expected to watch two videos that will provide you with examples to explain form and rhythm. Afterwards, the six musical period of Western music as well as the Philippine music history periods will be briefly described. The next part will shift our focus to dance. Likewise, its elements will be briefly described. It will be then followed by the history of dance, while the last part is about the development of dance in our country. Musical activity improves intellectual brain activity. Moreover, music skills may enhance self-confidence, social bonding, and success in society. Playing music can help in bringing down stress levels and improves overall health and well-being. On the next slide is a video explaining how playing an instrument benefits a person's brain. Did you know that every time musicians pick up their instruments, there are fireworks going off all over their brain? On the outside, they may look calm and focused, reading the music and making the precise and practice movements required. But inside their brains, there's a party going on. How do we know this? Well, in the last few decades, neuroscientists have made enormous breakthroughs in understanding how our brains work by monitoring them in real time with instruments like fMRI and PET scanners. When people are hooked up to these machines, tasks such as reading or doing math problems each have corresponding areas of the brain where activity can be observed. But when researchers got the participants to listen to music, they saw fireworks. Multiple areas of their brains were lighting up at once as they processed the sound, took it apart to understand elements like melody and rhythm, and then put it all back together into unified musical experience. And our brains do all this work in the split second between when we first hear the music and when our foot starts to tap along. But when scientists turn from observing the brains of music listeners to those of musicians, the little backyard fireworks became a jubilee. It turns out that while listening to music engages the brain in some pretty interesting activities, Playing is music is the brain's equivalent of a full-body full worker. The neuroscientists saw, the neuroscientists saw multiple light areas of the brain light up, simultaneously processing different information in intricate, interrelated, and astonishingly fast sequences. But what is it about making music that sets the brain alight? The research is still fairly new, but neuroscientists have a pretty good idea. Playing a musical instrument engages practically every area of the brain at once, especially the visual, auditory, and motor cortices. And as with any other workout, disciplined, structured practice in playing music strengthens those brain functions, allowing us to apply that strength to other activities. The most obvious difference between listening to music and playing it is that the latter requires fine motor skills, which are controlled in both hemispheres of the brain. It also combines the linguistic and mathematical precision in which the left hemisphere is more involved with the novel and creative content that the right excels in. For these reasons, playing music has been found to increase the volume and activity in the brain's corpus callosum, the bridge between the two hemispheres, allowing messages to get across the brain faster and through more diverse routes. This may allow musicians to solve problems more effectively and creatively in both academic and social settings. Because making music also involves crafting and understanding its emotional content and message, Musicians often have higher levels of executive function, a category of interlinked tasks that includes planning, strategizing, and attention to detail, and requires simultaneous analysis of both cognitive and emotional aspects. This ability also has an impact on how our memory systems work. And indeed, musicians exhibit enhanced memory functions, creating, storing, and retrieving memories more quickly and efficiently. Studies have found that musicians appear to use their highly connected brains 
to give each memory multiple tags, such as a conceptual tag, an emotional tag, an audio tag, and a contextual tag, like a good internet search engine. So how do we know that all these benefits are unique to music, as opposed to, say, sports or painting? Or could it be that people who go into music were already smarter to begin with? Neuroscientists have explored these issues, but so far they have found that the artistic and aesthetic aspects of learning to play a musical instrument are different from any other activity studied, including other arts. And several randomized studies of participants who showed the same levels of cognitive function and neural processing at the start found that those who were exposed to a period of music learning showed enhancement in multiple brain areas compared to the others. This recent research about the mental benefits of playing music has advanced our understanding of mental function, revealing the inner rhythms and complex interplay that make up the amazing orchestra of our brain. Okay, so I hope that after watching the video, you would have the motivation to learn at least one instrument. Music is an art form wherein the medium is sound organized in time. It is also perhaps the most universal of the performing arts and is found in every society, most often as an integral part of other performing art forms and other domains of intangible cultural heritage, including rituals, festive events, or oral traditions. It can be found in the most diverse contexts. It is considered sacred or profane, classical or popular, closely connected to work or entertainment. There may also be a political or economic dimension to music. It can recount a community's history sing the praises of a powerful person, and play a key role in economic transactions. The occasions on which music is performed are just as varied. It is performed during marriages, funerals, rituals, and initi initiations, festivities, and all kinds of entertainment, as well as many other social functions. On this slide are the building blocks that make music. As stated a while ago, music is sound organized in time. When these building blocks or elements are arranged or organized effectively, certain emotions may be evoked. For example, a slow rhythm using minor chords may induce a gloomy feeling or a pensive state in a person. Melody is the tune of the song or the arrangement of notes. Harmony refers to the blending of sounds. Rhythm is the time in music. It determines the beats and length of sound or silence. A video is provided for examples or to further explain what rhythm is. So please take time to watch those two videos. Form is the overall plan or structure or outline of music. This element helps identify the genre of a piece of music. Dynamics refers to the relative loudness or quietness of music. Tone color is also called a timbre. It refers to the tone quality. This enables listeners to distinguish different instruments. For example, the tone color of an acoustic guitar differs from an electric one. The timbre allows us to determine the type of guitar. This also enables us to identify a singer. Just by listening to a song, a listener can determine who is singing because of a person's distinct timbre. Texture is the overall sound created by multiple instruments in music. The two videos explaining further rhythm and form are already uploaded on Blackboard. Again, please render time to view them. Now let us move on to the historical periods of Western music. The first period is the medieval period. Now, although we can assume that music began far before 1150, the medieval period is the first in which we can be sure as to how music sounded during this time. 
earlier forms of music actually before this period were mostly lost and undocumented. Most notated manuscripts from the medieval period came from the church or places connected to the church, and so most pieces have a religious subject. Instruments used during this time included the flute, the recorder, and plucked string instruments like the lute. Early versions of the organ and fiddle also existed. Perhaps the most known type of music from this period was the Gregorian chant. Gregorian chants were monophonic, which is a single, unaccompanied melodic line. These chants were most commonly sung by monks. Though the monophonic style was a staple in the medieval period, it is important to note that the polyphonic vocal genres also developed in this time. Polyphony is the use of multiple independent voice types as opposed to the one melody line in monophonic singing. By the way, to listen to examples, you may visit the provided website uh, in the list of references. The website is musicnotes.com. The Renaissance brought significantly increased amounts of harmony and polyphony into music as most composers were focused on choral music. It is considered the golden age of vocal music. Religious music continued to flourish throughout the entire Renaissance period, including new forms such as masses, anthems, psalms, and motets. Some composers of sacred music began to adopt secular forms such as the madrigal towards the end of the period. Instrumentation became more prominent during this period with the introduction of early brass instruments, adapted string instruments such as the guitar, small percussion instruments, and early woodwind instruments like the bagpipe, the one you're seeing in the picture. The second half of the Renaissance period was incredibly influential as composers became to move away from the modal system of harmony and towards the organization of major and minor scales. The Baroque period is commonly known for complex pieces and intricate harmonies. This period also set the groundwork for the next 300 years of music. The idea of the modern orchestra was born, along with opera, the concerto, sonata, and cantata. Choral music was no longer king as composers turned to create instrumental works for various ensembles. Classical music gradually began to work its way into society. Being played outdoors, at dinner parties and special functions, or as a spectacle in the form of opera. As instrumental pieces became more prominent, individual instruments uh, advanced drastically. Many new instruments emerged, such as the oboe, bassoon, cello, contrabass, and fortepiano, which is an early version of the piano. The string family of the Renaissance was replaced with stronger sounds from the violin, viola, and cello. The invention of the harpsichord flourished, and all existing woodwind and brass instruments were updated and advanced. The Baroque period also introduced stronger percussion with instruments like the timpani, snare drum, tambourine, and castanets. Joan Bach and Antonio Vivaldi, this is Bach, by the way, this is a famous meme, if I'm not mistaken, and this is Antonio Vivaldi. You may have heard of these names before, so they are composers who contributed much in this era. The term classical music has two meanings. The first broader meaning is that it includes all Western art music from the medieval era to the 2000s. The specific meaning refers to the music from the 1750s to the early 1820s. We are discussing the specific meaning of classical music, okay, specific meaning of classical music in this section. The classical period expanded upon the Baroque period. It, did, it added a majorly influential new form, which is the sonata. This period also saw the development of the concerto, symphony, trio, and quartet. 
orchestras increased in size, range, and power, and instrumentation overall had a lighter, more evident texture than Baroque music, making it less complicated. Ludwig van Beethoven here and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart are notable composers of this period. The Romantic period took classical music and added overwhelming amounts of intensity and expression. As the period developed, composers gradually let go of heavily structured pieces and gravitated towards drama and emotion. Instrumentation became even more prominent with orchestras growing to higher numbers than ever before. Composers experimented in new ways, trying out unique instrumentation combinations and reaching new horizons in harmony. Public concerts and operas moved away from the exclusivity of royalty and riches and into the hands of the urban middle-class society for all to enjoy. The Romantic period was also the first period where national music, music schools began to appear. The well-known relaxing piano pieces of Frédéric Chopin, this is Chopin, were composed during this period. The 20th and 21st centuries can be broken down into even smaller periods. The Impressionist period is from 1890 to 1925. The Expressionist is from 1908 to 1950. The Modern period is from 1890 to 1975, while the Postmodern or Contemporary is from 1930 or 1945 up to the present. These subgenres of music are normally lumped into one large category since there are so many diverse and opposing styles. The 20th and 21st centuries can only be described as free control for composers. And now moving on, let's understand the history of our country's music. Although geographically, the Philippines belong to the East, its music has been heavily influenced by the West, owing to 333 years of Spanish rule and 45 years of American domination. Music in the highland and lowland, where indigenous culture continues to thrive, has strong Asian elements. In contrary, Spanish and American influences are highly evident in the music of the urban areas. In discussing Philippine music, Three main divisions are apparent. First, an old Asian-influenced music referred to as the indigenous. Second, a religious and secular music influenced by Spanish and European forms. And third, an American-European-inspired classical, semi-classical, and popular music. These three main streams of Philippine music comprise what we refer to today as Philippine music. The indigenous traditions are practiced by about 10% of the population of the country. 8% of this minority comprises some 50 language groups of people who live in the mountains of northern Luzon and the islands of Mindanao, Sulu, Palawan, and Mindoro in southern and western Philippines. The remaining 2% of these groups are the Muslims from Mindanao and Sulu. While there is no written information about the music in the Philippines before the arrival of Magellan in 1521, there are subsequent reports made by friars, civil servants, and travelers that include descriptions of instrumental and vocal music. They are sometimes mentioned in passing, while in others, they are in greater detail. From these documents, various kinds of instruments are made of bronze, bamboo, or wood. These include gongs of various kinds of size and shapes, drums, flutes of different types, zithers, lutes, clappers, and buzzers. Vocal genres include epics relating genealogies and exploits of heroes and gods, Work songs related to planting, harvesting, fishing. 
We also have ritual songs to drive away evil spirits or to evoke blessings or invoke blessings from the good spirits. Songs to celebrate festive occasions, particularly marriage, birth, victory at war, or the settling of tribal disputes. There are also mourning songs for the dead, courting songs, and children's game songs. It is this type of music that is still practiced today by the indigenous groups. With the coming of the Spaniards, the Filipinos' music underwent a transformation with the arrival of Western influences, particularly the Spanish-European culture prevalent during the 17th to the 19th centuries. The Hispanization during the succeeding three centuries after 1521 was tied up with religious conversion. It changed the people's musical thinking and what emerged was a hybrid expression tinged with Hispanic flavor. It produced a religious music connected to and outside the Catholic liturgy and a European-inspired secular music adapted by the Filipinos and reflected in their folk songs and instrumental music. The Harana and Condiman are two Philippine styles that became popular in the Spanish period. Harana is a lyrical courtship style based on Mexican-Spanish traditions, while Condiman is a passionate form of Tagalog romantic song based on Spanish melodies and song structures. The American regime lasted from 1898 to 1946 during which time Philippine music underwent another process of transformation. In the newly established public school system, music was included in the curriculum at the elementary and later on at the high school levels. Music conservatories and colleges were established at the tertiary level. Graduates from these institutions included the first generation of Filipino composers whose works were written in Western idioms and forms. Their works and those of the succeeding generations of Filipino composers represent the classical art music tradition, which continues to flourish today. American lifestyle and pop culture gave rise to music created by Filipinos using Western pop forms. And these forms are referred to as Pinoy pop, and they include the following forms. We have folk songs, dance tunes, ballads, Broadway type songs, rock and roll, disco, jazz, and rap. Filipino pop is also known as OPM, which means original Filipino music, original Pinoy music, or original Philippine music. Originally, the term rose as a label for Philippine pop ballads made popular in the 1970s by artists such as Basil Valdez and Freddy Aguilar. Over time, OPM has come to refer to all music created by people of Philippine ancestry, no matter where or when in any Philippine language. Most OPM originates in Manila and is sung in Tagalog. Sometimes, to educate people, this exclusion of other distinct Filipino groups are pinpointed and advocated for inclusion to try to correct this error. The strong band tradition in the Philippines, which began during the previous Spanish period and which continues to this day, produced outstanding musicians, composers, and performers. Today, contemporary Filipino music is still global, actively soaking in influences from Western genres like rock, jazz, bossa nova, and hip hop. Let us now shift our focus to dance. Dance comes from the German word Damson, which means to stretch or to drag. It is defined as the movement of the body in a rhythmic way, usually to music and within a given space for the purpose of expressing an idea or emotion, releasing energy, 
or simply taking delight in the movement itself. Aristotle defined it as rhythmic movement whose purpose is to represent men's characters as well as what they do and suffer. This definition by Aristotle refers to the central role that dance played in classical Greek theater, where the, cor where the chorus, through its movements, reenacted the themes of drama. In 1721, English ballet master John Weaver defined dance as an elegant and regular movement harmoniously composed of beautiful attitudes and contrasted graceful posture of the body and parts thereof. Weaver's description reflects very clearly the kind of dignified and courtly movement that characterized the ballet of his time with its highly formalized aesthetics and lack of forceful emotion. But John Martin, a 20th century dance critic, almost ignored the formal aspect of dance in emphasizing its role as a physical expression of inner emotion. A truly universal definition of dance, therefore, returns to the uh, fundamental principle that dance is an art form or activity that utilizes the body and the range of movement of which the body is capable. Unlike the movements performed in everyday living, dance movements are not directly related to work, travel, or survival. Dance may, of course, be made up of movements associated with these activities as in the work dances common to many cultures, and it may even accompany such activity. However, even in the most practical dances, movements that make up the dance are not reducible to those of straightforward labor. Rather, dances involve some extra qualities such as self-expression, aesthetic pleasure, and entertainment. The elements of dance are the foundational concepts and vocabulary that help students or anybody to develop movement skills and understand dance as an artistic process. The acronym BASTE may help students to remember the elements of dance. The elements of dance are body, action, space, time, and energy. In dance, the body is the mobile figure or shape felt by the dancer, seen by others. The body is sometimes relatively still and sometimes changing as the dancer moves in place or travels through the dance area. Dancers may emphasize specific parts of their body in a dance phrase or use their whole body all at once. The body is the conduit between the inner realm of intentions, ideas, emotions, and identity, and the other outer realm of expression and communication. So it is the link between what's inside and those who are looking as the audience. Action is any human movement included in the act of dancing. It can include dance steps, facial movements, partner lifts, gestures, and even everyday movements such as walking. Dance is made up of streams of movement and pauses. So, action refers not only to steps and sequences, but also to pauses and, mo and moments of relative stillness. Movements may be choreographed or improvised. Okay, next we move on to the third and fourth elements of dance. We have space and time. Dancers interact with space in so many ways. They may stay in one place or they may travel from one place to another. They may alter the direction, level, size, and pathways of their movements based on the space. Space determines, therefore, the interactions among dancers and their expressions. Sometimes, dances are created for specific locations, such as an elevator, 
or on a raft in a lake for site-based performances. Time is determined by the key word or question when. It affects the rhythmic patterns, speed, beat, duration, timing relationships, and tempo in a dance. Time in dance may be organized in many ways, such as using clock timing and sensed time. In contrary to clock timing, where dance is based on units of seconds, minutes, and or hours, sensed time arrangement happens when dancers pick up on each other's timing rather than the music score. The last element of dance is energy. Energy is about how the movement happens. All dances use the element of energy, though in some instances, it may be slow, supple, and indirect. Not the punchy, high-speed energy of a fast-tempo dance. Energy choices may also reveal emotional states. For example, a powerful push might be aggressive or playfully boisterous depending on the intent and situation. The next section is the history of dance. Dance had been a major form of religious ritual and social expression within primitive culture. It was also used as a way of, of expression and reinforcing tribal unity and strength. In the prehistoric period, dance forms were based on superstition and were infused with magic. Shamans, as lead dancers, acted as physicians and religious leaders, and they kept tribes healthy, prosperous, and safe. During the ancient civilization period, it is believed that the first people to dance were the Egyptians. Archaeologists discovered paintings of dancing figures in rock shelters and caves. Kings, priests, and virgin slaves led by priests danced to express religion and magic. Some dances in this period were also used to perfect their military training. Dances were also performed for entertainment. In Greece, Plato immensely gave importance to dance in education, as stated in the Education on the Laws. He highlighted the two kinds of dance and music. The first one is the noble, which is fine and honorable, while the other one is the ignoble, imitating what is mean or ugly. In contrary to Greece, ancient Rome gave less importance to dancing, which eventually became an integral part of the corruption in the latter days of the Roman Empire, resulting in the condemnation of dance by early Christians. Although dance was primarily performed for religious, social, and entertainment, some dances were considered sinful and pagan by the Roman Catholic Church. Let us move on to the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Ballet started in Italy in 1400, but it did not become popular until the 1500. It gained its popularity when a lady of the arts, Catherine de' Medici, married King Henry II, and they threw festivals where they would perform ballet dances. Eventually, it became a professional art with proper form and institutions. A vast dance movement occurred throughout the courts of Europe in the 15th and 16th centuries. During these times, new court dances performed by the nobility came about as well as the rise of the art of ballet in Italy and France. Several other dance forms continued to sprout and spread across several countries. Now, let's talk about the dance forms and the movements towards the 21st century. During the 16th and 17th centuries, dance increased as a court amusement and later transformed into professional entertainment. In the 1600s, 
Mask dancing became popular. It involved intricate costuming and stage designing that also incorporated singing and acting. It was often used as a court entertainment. A style that evolved from courtroom dancing happened in the 18th century, particularly in 1795. It is classical Persian dancing. In this kind of dance, dancers would perform artistic and lively dances for the shah or the king or ruler. The music is usually played by a small band. The tippity tappy or tap dancing was invented too in the 18th century. It originated from African tribe dancing. Tap dancing makes percussion sounds because of dancers most commonly wearing leather shoes with two pieces of metal and clip and clap against hard floors. Tap is still very popular to this day. In the 19th century, jazz and ballroom dances like the cotillion, waltz, and polka emerged. The 20th century is described as the period of dance fever, wherein the young and old alike were not limited to express emotions through dance. In the 1950s, contemporary dances emerged. Contemporary dance is a style that combines jazz, ballet, and modern dance. It can be many different styles, but most of the time, it is intense. Hip-hop dances associated with funk and break dancing became a hit in the 70s. Popular fad dances, passing dances, also emerged like YMCA and Macarena. Today's dance in the 21st century has taken a turn towards more hip-hop. Small and popular dances that involve hip-hop include the whip, nay nay, gangnam style, and many more. Dance continues to evolve today. And now for the last part of this lecture, we zero in Philippine dance history. Dance is an integral part of Filipino culture that dates to the period before Ferdinand Magellan stepped foot in the Philippines. The traditional dances of the Filipinos are vibrant and colorful, capturing the history of the archipelago. Before the Spaniards came, various tribes were scattered across more than 7,000 islands. Each of these tribes own unique traditions and dances. The Igorot tribes lived in the mountains of Luzon. A handful of these tribes still reside in the mountains, and they were successful in resisting Spanish colonization. Many of the dances have been handed down through the generations. Dance expresses the tribe's love of nature and gratitude to the gods. The dances of the Muslims, known as Moros, are alluring and colorful. Female dancers wear, costume, wear costumes studded with jewels, while male dancers brandish or carried swords and shields. The Moros use languid arm movements to imitate the world around them, such as the wind, the sea, and the fish. Each dance is punctuated by the haunting sounds of the kulintang, a set of small gongs. Like the Igorots, the Moros were able to resist Spanish rule, which is why many of their dances continue to flourish and being practiced even today. During the Spanish occupation, Western culture spread through the islands, including such Western dances as the waltz, fandango, and polka. With a little Filipino flair or enthusiasm, they quickly became part of the culture. This new style of dance was named Maria Clara after the tragic character in Jose Rizal's novel, No Limitangere. An example of the Maria Clara form is the Cariñosa. It is a much-loved folk dance in the Philippines. Here's a trivia. 
During the Marcos regime, the Cariñosa was named the National Dance of the Philippines. To this day, school textbooks still claim this. However, the Philippine government maintains it is another dance called the Tinikling, Tinikling which is the native or the national dance of our country. Today, the Cariñosa is performed at social gatherings and festivities. The Americans brought with them new frenzy and cheerful forms such as the tap. You have seen an example animated image for the tap dance in one slide. Okay, this is the cake walk or a segment of that dance. The big apple and the boogie woogie. Filipinos became more interested in the American vaudeville or vaudeville or stage show, which is filled with both theatrical and circus acts, and more reminiscent of Broadway musicals. The disco scene also grew more in the 1980s. European classical ballet also gained more popularity following the American dances. International acts came to perform in the Philippines, while some of them stayed or remained to train Filipino dancers who became the first notable ballet dancers who had also become choreographers in the country. Filipino dancers continued to mix in elements of folklore and native themes during this period. Today, the Bayanihan Philippine National Folk Dance Company has been lauded for preserving many of the various traditional folk dances found throughout the Philippines. They are famed for their iconic performances of Philippine dances such as the Tinikling and Singkil that both feature clashing bamboo poles. Now, of course, whenever we talk about Philippine dances, Philippine folk dances also are tackled. So what are folk dances anyway? How come some dances from our colonizers are considered folk dances of our country? Before we answer these questions, here is, a, here is a trivia. Did you know that there are 175 folk dances in the Philippines? We have a lot. Okay, but we will be only uh, naming three or describing three in this lecture. To simply define what constitutes a Philippine folk dance, keep in mind that these are dances that incorporate influences from immigrants and conquerors, while at the same time maintaining distinctly Filipino roots. Philippine folk dancing is a true reflection of, da of daily life in past centuries while enchanting modern audiences at the same time. Again, I repeat, in this lecture, we will not discuss all 175 folk dances in the Philippines. We only have three in this lecture. The first example is the Tinikling, which is the national dance of the Philippines. It is considered the oldest of the Philippine folk dances. There are many tall tales about the origin of the dance. According to one story, Filipino farm workers who displeased their Spanish masters had their feet smashed by two bamboo poles. When the poles were apart, the workers would jump to avoid getting hurt. Thus, this dance was born. Another description of the origin tells that the dance came from the countryside and it takes its name and movements from the tinikling bird as it roams between grass streams crushes tree branches, and avoids traps set by rice farmers. The singkil, this is the singkil, or a segment of the dance, is a dance traditionally performed by single women to attract the attention of potential suitors. Dancers perform a series of graceful movements as they step in and out from between bamboo poles which are rhythmically clapped together. Fans and scarves are often used to enhance the dancer's movements. This dance reflects 
the pre-Islamic Maranao interpretation of the ancient Hindu-Indian epic, the Ramayana. The last example is the Maglalatik or Magbabao. It is a war dance representing a picture of the battle between the Moros and the Christians over the Latik. The remainder left after the coconut milk has been boiled. At some time in the course of Spanish rule, with coconut shells as tools, the people of the barrios of Loma and Zapote in the town of Binyan, in the province of Laguna, dance the Maglalatik or Magbabao. This is the end of the lecture. Please make sure to watch the two videos for the elaboration and examples of the elements of music, which are form and rhythm. For additional reading, you may visit these websites. Thank you very much for listening.